MSRP has been an amazing program. It's changed my life. I'm at MIT. Just having the opportunity to be in MSRP, I just know that my future is set. It really provides a strong community aspect that I'm really, really grateful for. It's giving me my voice that I probably would not have found anywhere else. It's MIT, right? I can't think of any better school, any better place I could spend my summer doing research. Living in Chicago, I know we have access to a lot of water resources that people around the world don't. So going into civil engineering, I thought it was important to me. I think I can figure some things out in that field. I'm working on uh, water filtration membranes, trying to uh, do different experimental trials to optimize a membrane layer for a water filter. So NECA is primarily doing the building of the material. So she's working on a polymer support layer for the thin nanoporous membrane section and also optimizing the thickness of the membrane. So I'm primarily working at the characterization of the material that NECA is making. It's been a pretty good team effort so far. This project is absolutely something out of my comfort zone. I'm working on layer by layer nanoparticles for the target delivery of a chemogene therapy for ovarian cancer cells. Your system is not just the chemicals, you have to look at the cells, you have to look at the biology and how they behave and, and all these other aspects that I never consider. From that point of view, she's, she's came in with a chemistry and some of the materials knowledge. She's leaving with a lot more of a biology side of things. So in a way, it has helped me to actually see the bigger picture and not just focus on one little thing. I'm working on the next generation of the bionic ankle uh, to be used by uh, amputees and I work specifically on optimizing a motor inside the ankle that kind of uh, works to store energy as somebody's walking. So Sebastian's been going in and he's been adding new motor designs and in addition to that he's adding new functionality to our code. I use a lot of principles that I learned in computer science classes along with the design principles that I've learned in my mechanical engineering classes. So applying them all together in this very specific, specific topic is something I wasn't used to. It was really weird, right? So. I get the email saying, here's some background information about your research project, um, here's some papers on it. And I like look at the title and it's seawater uranium extraction and like my heart kind of like dropped for a second. My research is uh, finding out a way to harvest uranium from seawater. Um, specifically, we're looking at building a machine to move some chemical uh, polymers that have already been developed and we're trying to design, build, and test this large device um, out in the ocean. Where I live, I, I live in western South Dakota. Um, it's right next to Wyoming, which has a lot of coal mines. Uh, we're right below North Dakota, which has seen expanded fracking recently. He's experienced that dirty drilling firsthand, and that was really eye-opening for me, and I think he brings a whole new perspective to the problem. My role in the project is helping to design the, the washing system. Um, so land-based uranium mining is so bad for the environment. And if we could find a way to get this uranium from seawater that already exists, it's just in the water, there's no ocean mining involved or anything, that we could eliminate the need to mine uranium on land. Bringing in people from outside of MIT, you bring in all new experiences, all new perspectives, and it really enriches the environment. We're turning 3D and CAD drawings to a physical product. And with that physical product, we're able to deliver it to different locations so that families and people of low income can easily construct their own home at a fast rate. One of the first exercises I give students that work over the summer is uh, you, you have to uh, figure out how to decompose a shape. And
into a bunch of small pieces and then put it back together after you cut it on a laser cutter. And um, it's the beginning of real fabrication at a big scale. I was having troubles with it. After I finished uh, printing out the pieces and putting the models together, I find it really like difficult to like finish it. It was just falling apart. The glue was getting messy. So it was really like holding me down. When he came into the lab, he saw my model and he was like, who did this? Uh, my advice to him was um, to really try hard to just keep looking at the problem and asking why is this not working, as opposed to saying, I have a solution. And just keep asking why. He said that it happens all the time and this is it the first time that it's happened. So just keep on trying. Research is all about, you know, failing, failing, keep on going, keep on going until you get it right. The next day, it didn't take me nothing to make the next model. Uh, in the future, if you could 3D print a door that opens in a different way, or a door that's very thick and the door is used to grow plants, or the door has a completely different purpose, it's, it's a heater or a cooling device. Um, but learning how to 3D print it first, and then at a small scale, and then learning how to 3D print it at a large scale will allow us to turn a door into, the, into a device. And, and he's sort of right at the beginning of that. summer I'm, I'm working on this specific S100 protein called S100 A7 which is basically an antimicrobial protein that is released at sites of infection and so what I'm tasked to do over the summer is to you know kind of evaluate um, how is it that these the different redox state of these cysteine residues confers stability of the protein um, when it comes to like different being exposed to different proteases in the body. We actually use like different instruments to analyze keep track of how the protein behaves when it's exposed to these different um, serine proteases. So at least what I'm trying to do is give Shirlene uh, a chance to really explore her ideas. So I want to give her the tools and uh, the feedback to design her own experiments, uh, analyze the data herself, and really think about what the next step is and how to integrate everything into a story because that's really what research is all about. It's not just about you running experiments, it's about you actually coming up with a mindset to actually see how is it that we're going to approach this problem so you get like an understanding of how that works. MSRP is really like a structured program. We have a lot of activities. We have a lot of like seminars. So every Monday night we have a seminar. Uh, someone comes in, so it's sometimes uh, either like a, a seminar where they're just talking to us or sometimes it's a Wednesdays we have research seminars where a study group comes together and they present research that a professor published, an MIT professor specifically. Then the professor comes and they talk about their journey to the PhD. You're not going to get into every program, you're not going to get every job, not every opportunity is going to go your way. But when you don't apply, the answer is no. I would, I would like to encourage you to make them tell you no. Make them tell you no. Don't be the reason that you don't walk through the door. I see MSRP as like an entire family. With the, the pod meetings that we had every week, we're able to really review our progress through the program. Anytime we're stressed, there's always someone who's uplifting. And there's someone who comes in with confidence, you know. And that, that energy is spread throughout. This is actually my third time back as a program assistant. Um, the program is something that I um, hold very dearly. It's, it really did change my life and my, my path. Um, and so giving back is something that I've, I always do when I'm available. Um, I think the program assistant uh, in general try to facilitate the whole uh, summer research program uh, for the interns. And uh, we try to make sure that uh, they have a good time, they're creative, and we also serve as a resource uh, so that we can answer any questions they have about grad school and uh, what to expect, uh, how to submit an application, how to write their essays, and so on. 
What makes MSRP in turn special is that I can create a connection with them naturally. MSRP is like a new family. The friends I've made will be like friends for life. Oh, you have to do it. You absolutely have to do it.